into our program on indoor air pollutants and indoor air quality. My name is Bill Curriger from W.E. Curriger Associates and Airspill.com. I'll be your host as we investigate the sources, characteristics, exposure symptoms, and remedies for common indoor air pollutants in your home or office. Common indoor air pollutants include such chemicals as carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, a whole host of volatile organic chemicals, radon in air and water, and particles such as asbestos, soot, a wide variety of allergens, and mold and bacteria. We'll investigate each indoor air pollutant. We'll show you how to evaluate your indoor air, how to diagnose a particular problem you are having in your home or office, how to find the source of that pollutant, and then recommend common sense solutions so that you can correct the problem and improve your IAQ, your indoor air quality. So let's begin by taking a look at one of the most common and potentially dangerous indoor air pollutants, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas. It is produced by the incomplete burning of carbon-based materials and fuels. Examples of fuels and materials that can produce carbon monoxide include gasoline, diesel fuel, heating oil, kerosene, propane, liquefied petroleum gas and other natural gases, coal, charcoal or coke, wood, paper, plastics, in fact anything else that burns. Fuel burning devices in and near your home that can produce exhaust that contains CO, carbon monoxide, includes residential, commercial and industrial heating systems, natural gas fired hot water heating systems, kitchen ranges, ovens, and clothes dryers that are fueled by natural gas, space heaters fueled by kerosene or natural gas, wood or coal stoves, fireplaces, charcoal and charcoal grills, and cigarettes, cigars, and pipes. An automobile idling in your garage produces carbon monoxide. Before we proceed further with our discussion of carbon monoxide, we need to understand the significant difference between the outdoors and indoors. The outdoors is open to an infinitely huge atmosphere. Outdoor air dilutes pollutants quickly and efficiently, while indoors, in a modern, typical, rather airtight home or office, pollutants can accumulate to high levels that can impact your health. Whether carbon monoxide or other indoor air pollutants, indoor conditions can concentrate, outdoor air dilutes. For example, let's look at the level of carbon monoxide here in the city, with lots of automobiles and residential, commercial and industrial chimneys emitting exhaust that contains carbon monoxide. The CO or carbon monoxide level, shown on the right side of this meter, is zero parts per million parts of air. But as soon as we begin to confine exhaust fumes, such as here in this open garage, concentrations quickly increase to alarm levels. Never let a car, truck, or other device or appliance powered by a combustion engine idle in your garage. So now that we know where carbon monoxide comes from, how can we determine if your home or office has a problem with carbon monoxide? One way is to find out if anyone in the building is showing symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. Another is to monitor for levels with a carbon monoxide alarm. Carbon monoxide is poisonous to people and pets because it inhibits the ability of your blood to carry oxygen. Let's take a look at some of the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. Symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning can include headaches, weakness, dizziness, and flu-like symptoms. The symptoms may disappear when you go outdoors. Symptoms caused by high levels of carbon monoxide can include nausea, vomiting, and loss of appetite, severe headaches, confusion, and depression, sleepiness, fainting, fatigue, shortness of breath, and tightness across the chest excessive yawning or irregular breathing.
carbon monoxide can kill. A carbon monoxide alarm with a digital readout can help you determine what concentration of carbon monoxide is present in your house or office and warn you if dangerous levels occur. This particular model starts showing carbon monoxide levels at 30 parts per million and by hitting the peak level button you can see levels down to about 11 parts per million. This is an excellent way to monitor carbon monoxide levels in your home or office on a regular basis. Indoor exposure limits set by professional and government agencies include 9 parts per million over 8 hours of the day, a 1 hour limit of 35 parts per million, a maximum not to exceed limit of 200 parts per million, and an immediately dangerous to health limit of 1,200 parts per million. Is there any evidence of a carbon monoxide problem in your home or office? Does anyone have symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning? Remember, if levels are high enough, people who live or work in the same building will start to have some of the same symptoms. Or, if you go home, do you start having symptoms such as headaches, dizziness, or flu-like symptoms that are similar to other family members who stay in the home all day long? Or, does your carbon monoxide alarm constantly read above 10 parts per million even after you set and reset the peak level. If you've answered yes to any of the above statements, you need to start looking for a potential source of carbon monoxide gas in your home. Let's take a look at our safety checklist for some guidance. Inspect and clean all vent pipes and chimneys. Replace corroded parts. Check for soot or creosote blockage, bird nests, backdrafts, cracks or staining improper installation or operation. Notice the stain on the middle of this oil-fired furnace. This should be checked to be sure exhaust is not backdrafting from this area on a regular basis. The outside of the metal exhaust vents at the top of the furnace must be checked for corrosion, holes, constricting dents, and the inside checked for soot and creosote blockage. The connection of the metal exhaust vent to the chimney should be examined for soot and creosote stains, exhaust fumes, a loose fit and corrosion. The inside should be checked for blockage and corrosion. The chimney furnace damper should be inspected for free movement, corrosion, backdrafts, staining, and soot or creosote blockage. Do not run automobiles or any other combustion engine devices, for example a lawnmower or snowblower, in any garage. Never use a charcoal grill indoors. Vent exhaust from all combustion devices, including fuel-fired space heaters, to the outdoors through chimneys or exhaust vents. Follow all installation and operating instructions for any appliance. Have a licensed plumber, heating contractor, or other specialists check the installation. Never use a gas range, oven, or clothes dryer to heat a room. Remember, any appliance or structure that burns anything in order to work is a potential source of carbon monoxide. Let's review measures you can take to improve your indoor air quality and prevent a carbon monoxide emergency from occurring at your home or office. Preventative measures you can take include education. Sources of information include the internet, local utilities, and the W.E. Curragher Associates Carbon Monoxide Factbook and Indoor Evaluation Checklist. Install carbon monoxide alarms with digital displays. Have chimneys, vents, and fuel appliances checked and serviced by licensed personnel annually. Provide fresh air through ventilation by leaving windows and flues open a little to dilute carbon monoxide from any normal source, such as cigarette smoke, a non-vented gas-fired kitchen stove, candles, incense, etc. In case of an emergency, call 911, your local fire department, 
or other local emergency services. How serious is carbon monoxide poisoning? Carbon monoxide is the number one cause of poisoning deaths in the United States. For that reason, in an emergency, quick action and caution is the rule. If people are experiencing symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning, if your carbon monoxide alarm goes off, or if levels on the alarm are reading 100 parts per million and nobody appears to have symptoms, or for any other reason you believe there is a serious carbon monoxide leak in your home or office, what should you do? Emergency actions to take include the following. Immediately get to fresh air. Go outdoors or open windows and doors to ventilate the building. Shut off the furnace or other appliance if a switch is en route as you leave the building. Do not go to the possible source of the problem, such as the basement or garage. You could be overcome by carbon monoxide. Call 911, your fire department or other public safety personnel for medical attention. Provide exposed people fresh air, CPR if necessary. Get unconscious people to the hospital. Thoroughly ventilate the building and correct the problem before re-entering. What if you are responding to a call of distress from a neighbor? Or you suspect excessive carbon monoxide levels in a building and you're outside? Remember, if you enter the building, you may be overcome by the high concentrations and not be able to make it out. For that reason, emergency procedures to follow include Call emergency personnel such as the fire department. Emergency response personnel can enter a building with respirators and an air supply if necessary. Never enter a garage or house when an automobile is idling in the garage. If possible, open doors and windows from the outside. Get the occupants to fresh air. Fresh air is the key to relieving symptoms and reducing carbon monoxide levels in the bloodstream. Ambulatory care, hospitalization, and oxygen treatment may also be necessary. Thank you for joining us. That's our program on the sources, hazards, symptoms, and cures for carbon monoxide in your home or office. Remember, you can't be too careful with this most dangerous of indoor air pollutants. For more information on carbon monoxide and other indoor air pollutants, consult our website at www.airspill.com, where you'll find products for the detection, measurement, and monitoring of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, oxygen, radon in air and water, a wide variety of volatile organic chemicals, including formaldehyde, dust analysis, and mold and bacteria. We wish you a good day and good air.